Hello everyone, uh, this is Zohir Choudhury. So today we will discuss two important uh, uh, surveillance types that are very common in the field of public health and global health. Uh, they are known as active surveillance and passive surveillance. So if we look at the various types of um, uh, public health surveillances out there. Um, there's a significant overlap among some of these surveillances. So, for example, uh, depending on the da data collection method, we can distinguish surveillances as active and pa versus passive. Uh, depending on what type of population you're targeting, it can be population-based surveillances, sentinel based surveillances. Dis uh, distinguished by the specific case definition, uh, we can say that some are laboratory-based surveillances or syndromic surveillances. And depending on the data source, um, indicator-based surveillances or evident um, event-based surveillances. So as mentioned previously, um, some of these surveillances can all be active or passive, uh, 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 or for example, the indicator-based surveillances can be uh, 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 passive uh, or can be active, sentinel, uh, and or it can be syndromic and so forth. Uh, so, so, um, um, so there's significant overlap between some of these approaches. <clears throat> However, um, we can distinguish them on a broad aspect. So, um, uh, let's look at these two primary types of public health surveillances, active versus passive, and this is the main focus in here. Um, so passive surveillance is uh, focusing on reporting, whereas active is really searching. And uh, passing surveillance, uh, passive surveillance often gathers disease data from all potential reporting uh, healthcare uh, workers. Uh, and health authorities, health authorities do not uh, stimulate reporting by reminding health workers to report disease. Um, nor providing feedback to individual health workers. Um, so it's very important to know that the term passive is used to convey the idea that health authorities take no action while waiting for report forms to be submitted. <clears throat> the surveillance coordinator may provide training to health workers in how to complete the surveillance forms and may even send uh, someone to periodically collect forms from health facilities, but little attention is given to individual health workers who report that information. So the passive surveillance um, is the status quo of public health surveillance. Majority of public health surveillance systems are passive. Um, most routine notifiable disease surveillance relies on passive reporting. And in passive surveillance, the physician, laboratory, or other healthcare provider, uh, essentially the reporters, take the initiative in submitting the report by following the list of reportable diseases that um, ha have been issued by their state's health departments and the health department or health agency for their states, um, uh, for their state. Um, <clears throat> so for example, passive surveillance is the most common type of surveillance in humanitarian emergencies. Most surveillances for communicable diseases are indeed passive. On the other hand, active is searching, essentially, and uh, active systems involve regular outreach to potential reporters to stimulate and prompt the reporting of specific diseases, viruses, or injuries. For example, active surveillance occurs when the collection of data from the lab, physician, or other healthcare provider is initiated by the health department. Active systems are often used for brief periods uh, for discrete purposes such as during outbreak investigations or research studies or special time limited events or for diseases of special interest such as SARS. It is also useful when important to identify all cases. Example, between 2002 and 2005, active surveillance was used to detect adverse effects associated with smallpox vaccine. Um, um, also, active surveillance is often used to validate the data in passive reporting, ensure that more complete reporting uh, 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 of conditions are done. <clears throat> 
So what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of passive surveillance? So passive surveillance has many advantages, such as being low cost or inexpensive and engaging many potential observers. However, the geographic coverage is large and typically unknown, and the, ex um, and the expertise among observers is highly, high, is, is highly variable. While passive reporting can be enhanced through public education and awareness campaigns, passive surveillance typically yields um, uh, results that underestimate the severity of infestation and often fails to identify invasions in a timely manner, that there is delay in reporting and barriers to electronic reporting in many countries as well. So passive surveillance, although very simple, it is limited by variability of quality and incompleteness in reporting, thus less comprehensive than active surveillance, which we'll discuss in the upcoming slides. Examples of passive surveillance are lab reporting of cancer, lead in blood, and other pollutants, as well as discharge records, administrative data, all are part of passive surveillance. This is an example of passive surveillance. Uh, this is the, in, uh, in the United States uh, and is the National Notifiable Disease Surveillance System or known as NNDSS. And um, 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 it is a passive system that includes all diseases and conditions under national surveillance uh, and it focuses on notifiable diseases as, as the name implies. <clears throat> In this figure, we can see how this passive surveillance system is composed of and why this is passive is because um, the uh, the surveillance system is at the state level or at the national level and this is national level surveillance. However, data are collected at state and territorial level by hospitals, healthcare providers, laboratories as patients come in and uh, uh, seek treatment. Um, so specific providers uh, uh, input uh, state mandated forms and those forms go into the state uh, and these are case reporting, uh, comp this is a case reporting component and uh, uh, the data is sorted out and the case is defined in conjunction with the CDC and the, and the state uh, specific authority. And as the, case, as the cases are defined, the, those specific diseases or conditions with that case uh, definition are uh, notified to at the national level. Um, and then the national level um, in, um, processes or analyzes the data. And as the data is analyzed, um, uh, it is communicated back to state or the public um, in, in specific uh, weekly or annual uh, summaries. At the same time, those diseases uh, that are of public health events of humanitarian concern uh, or fake events, potentially they are reported uh, to WHO for additional global reporting. This entire system is passive uh, because the data is passively uh, gathered. Another example of a passive surveillance system is uh, uh, the data collection process done uh, at the National Center for Health Statistics uh, and reported in here um, uh, with respect to caesarean rates. We can see how by looking at this passively collected data, how uh, we can follow trends of caesarean uh, birth from uh, in here from 1989 all the way up to 2021 and you can see the trend rising but this data is collected passively through a passive surveillance system in the same manner this is also a passive surveillance system collected through the uh, NNDSS uh, and you can see uh, the data sources are coming from the National Center for Health Statistics, National Health Examination Survey and National Health and Nutrition Examination Surveys. Um, however, the reporting in here um, is, uh, is passively done through NNDSS uh, and you can see um, uh, in here how the body mass index uh, trends are rising in the U.S. population um, um, uh, through this uh, uh, system. 
So pros and um, uh, so so the next uh, uh, um, surveillance is the active surveillance as compared to the passive. And uh, so since resources are often limited uh, in active surveillance systems, um, um, our uh, uh, active surveillance could be utilized for specific targeted surveys and specific illnesses or conditions um, over discrete periods of time or in a dis in a specified region. So active surveillance systems can validate passive surveillance uh, uh, systems or, and passive surveillance reporting, also ascertain the extent of the illness and condition, and allow for robust inference about prevalence, but it can be resource intensive uh, essentially because due to cost and personnel required um, and also it needs specific strategic planning and well developed methodologies uh, in order to uh, put together an active surveillance system. Examples are uh, annual surveys in the United States um, for behavioral risk factors uh, as well as WHO steps uh, wise uh, and then uh, other types of uh, um, surveillance system globally as well and we'll introduce some of them in here. So one example of active surveillance globally is the GTSS and GTSS stands for Global Tobacco Surveillance System. Uh, it was initiated in 1998 by WHO United States of America, uh, America Center for Disease Control and Prevention or CDC and the Canadian Public Health Association or CPHA. And the purpose of the GTSS is to enhance the capacity of countries to design, implement, and evaluate their National Comprehensive Tobacco Action Plan and to monitor the key articles of the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, or WHO FCTC. The Global Tobacco Surveillance System, or GTSS, is the largest surveillance system in the world, and um, this is uh, uh, an uh, it has uh, four active components. Um, so four surveys where they um, focus on uh, on, uh, on youth. Uh, school teachers and administrators, students in the medical field, as well as adults. And these four surveys are known as adult, Global Adult Tobacco Survey, GATS, Global Youth Tobacco Survey, GYTS, um, Tobacco Questions for Survey, GQTS, and Tobacco Questions for Service of Youth, GQTS, Youth. The, each data, uh, um, each of the survey collects data about about tobacco knowledge, attitude, use, and or intention to quit in the target population. And in this portal in here on the website, um, you can uh, see uh, the specific tool GTSS uses, and you can go to this and understand the specific uh, survey results. Another example of an active surveillance system is WHO Stepwise. And WHO Stepwise approach to surveillance provide an entry point for low and middle income countries to get started on chronic disease surveillance activities. It is also designed to help countries build and strengthen their capacity to conduct surveillance. The goal is that WHO step, um, um, uh, stepwise is uh, the, the goal in WHO stepwise is that the surveys used for surveillance are um, uh, are um, monitoring specific behaviors, diseases, and conditions over time, such as increases of those con uh, of those diseases or condition or decrease of those conditions, and can be used to examine the impact of interventions. And they are repeated every three to five years, and um, uh, um, and they are done in a stepwise fashion, as shown in here. So you have this core uh, function, uh, uh, stepwise core, and then you can add expanded modules and optional modules and more and more optional modules to go deeper and deeper into understanding your, your um, specific um, uh, conditions better. Uh, um, and uh, it has three steps. Um, uh, step one is the questionnaire. With, uh, which uh, uh, aims at the demographic factors and lifestyle factors. Step two is the physical measurement. And then step three is the biochemical measurements. Um, another example of active surveillance 
this is in the United States, is FoodNet. FoodNet is a collaboration among CDC, 10 state health departments shown in this map, and the U.S. Department of, Ag uh, Ag um, um, the US Department of Agriculture's Food Safety Inspection and Service, USDA, um, and the Food and Drug Administration, or FDA. FoodNet conducts active population-based uh, surveys of laboratory diagnosed infections uh, caused by this specific pathogen shown in here, Campylobacter, uh, Cyclospora, Listeria, Salmonella, uh, Stech, uh, Shigella, Vibrio, and Yersinia. And uh, uh, this is an active surveillance, meaning that the public health officials routinely communicate with more than 700 clinic laboratories serving the surveillance area, which is the 10 states. Um, and uh, the, these 10 states cover approximately 15% of the U.S. total population, which is about 51 million, um, million people that are under this active surveillance system. Um, data from FoodNet can be shown in here for some of the specific pathogens that are monitored, and you can see a uh, specific disease trend uh, from 1995 all the way up to present 2022 uh, in here, um, and you can see trends of some of these diseases or uh, illnesses that are foodborne um, in in those 10 states, um, uh, in those 10 state jurisdictions. So you can say incidence per 100,000 population, um, and of course you can follow the specific trend in 2020, uh, and this trend going down was due to uh, increased uh, um, uh, changes due, uh, due to COVID where restaurants are closed, people had less access to um, to health facilities, and there was a decline, significant decline of all of these diseases. So through this active surveillance, you can uh, capture this type of information. Again, another example from FoodNet that um, uh, we just discussed, but displayed differently in here, you can see um, these diseases that uh, are, meant, are captured in FoodNet in those 10 states, actively gathered, and uh, um, um, the infection uh, in here in percentage, and also uh, the 2020 food net safety report with respect to which uh, f um, specific diseases are increasing and which are showing no, no change and their specific rate in 2022. Thus, comparing active and passive surveillance systems, uh, we can say that passive surveillances are provider-initiated as compared to active surveillance that are investigator-initiated. There's no dedicated stuff um, from the active surveillance system. Um, and whereas <clears throat> in, in passive surveillance systems, there's no specific dedicated stuff, whereas in active surveillance system, there is a dedicated stuff. Uh, in passive surveillance, there's limited case finding uh, is performed, whereas in active extensive case uh, finding is performed. Uh, in passive, limited clinical and laboratory information as compared to active, where it's very extensive clinical and laboratory information is gathered um, for the disease or condition under surveillance. Uh, no audits are performed in passive surveillance as compared to active, where audits are performed for quality assurance. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, passive surveillance in general um, uh, is lower cost and as a result can cover a bigger uh, um, uh, population and a bigger uh, area, uh, whereas active surveillance is higher cost and is more narrow uh, with population coverage and more narrower in uh, location as well. So I think that's all. Thank you. Um, and I hope that you are able to understand what active and passive surveillance is. Thanks.